So here we have a divergent plate boundary part of the plate tectonic series and it's also called a constructive plate boundary because this is where the new plates or new oceanic plate is being created in this situation. Now we have the convection currents which is the mechanism for movement of the above plate and the plate is the crust and lithosphere and the ocean is sitting on top of this oceanic plate and you have this is happening in the asthenosphere with the convection currents which is plastic and it has the flow. Now the oceanic plate is thin compared to continental. It's between 5 to 15 or 20 kilometers thick and is composed of basalt. Now basalt is an igneous rock. It's extrusive and it's formed from cooling lava. Now this lava is present or comes through the crust at weak points and this is called the ridge where the lava breaks through onto the ocean floor, condenses and forms basaltic rock and these high elevation mountains on either side is called the ridge, or in this case the mid-ocean ridge. So Hess in the early 60s used sonar to first locate this mid-ocean ridge which connected all the major oceans and went around the entire planet. This is where the ocean crust, the oceanic plate, was being formed and constructed with the new lava forming the basalt. And the basalt was very young at the ridge, and as you went further away from the ridge, it got older. And this was the key into figuring out that the ocean floors were moving, which was sea floor spreading theory, and that concluded and helped to create the plate tectonic theory of the whole system working from the divergent plate boundary to transform plate boundary to eventually the plate being destroyed at a convergent plate boundary which is either subduction or mountain building or orogeny. So this was a key part in the system and how the convection currents are moving the above plate and spreading it at the ridge across all major ocean basins. So this diagram is in the plate tectonics unit. I'm looking at today the convergent plate boundary, which is oceanic converging with the continental. Now these plates are different and they differ in the thickness, composition and density. And this creates certain processes and features that occur at this boundary. So the ocean plate and continental plate, ocean plate is thinner, made of the crust of the sphere and the continental plate is thicker, again, made of crust and the sphere lithosphere. So underneath the crust and the lithosphere is the asthenosphere. This is the thicker layer that is where we have the movement, the convection currents, it's plastic in behavior, it flows due to the heat and this convection current that exists in this layer is the mechanism that moves and drives plate tectonics. So when discussing plate tectonics and convection currents, the convection currents are going to move the plates. In this case, they're going to move towards each other in a collision or convergent situation. And to, to do that, to really understand what happens when these two plates collide or hit, is going to be density. And density is mass over volume, and looking at how dense each plate is based on the composition or what it's made of. So the ocean plates composition versus the canal plates composition and what's going to happen when they collide based on the density and which one will sink, which one will float. An example of density I use in class is the iceberg in water and water is one gram per centimeter cube which is density and the iceberg because it floats is less, it's 0.8 or 0.85 and this allows the iceberg, even though it's a large piece of ice and weighs a lot of, lot of weight or tonnage, it's going to float because it is less dense than water. Great example to use in class. Density is really important. Now, basalt, which is the main rock of the ocean plate, is three grams per centimeter cubed, and the granite andesite. Cornell crust or plate is on average 2.7 grams per centimeter cube. So that means the oceanic plate is denser than the Cornell plate. So 
in terms of collision, what's going to happen is the oceanic plate is going to be forced under to sink, which is heavier, through the convection currents, which is called slab pull, and the fact that it's hitting against a larger plate, which is continental, and this is called subduction. So the whole process is to force the denser, heavier plate down into the upper mantle and the asthenosphere, where it's hotter, and you get the friction and earthquakes occurring with the movement of the two plates against each other, you get the accretional wedge forming, and you get melting partially of both kind of plates, the oceanic plate and the coronal plate. Mostly the coronal plate is melting with the addition of water, and it creates melt and magma, which is going to rise up, which is one major process and feature of this plate boundary. So the formation of magma from the melting of the descending plate and the coronal plate forms within the coronal plate itself and rises up, melts through, burns through the coronal plate on its way up as it's hot and it's rising and less dense and more buoyant and it reaches the surface and forms a chain or an arc of continental volcanic activity. And this is close to the coastline and there's a constant supply of magma from this subducting plate and the coronal plate melting and there's a constant flow and volcanic activity. So two features are also formed from the subducting oceanic plate, which is going to be the ocean trench, which is going to be off the coast, and it's the point where the subducting plate starts to dive down through slab pull and form a deep part of the ocean. And then you have accretional wedge, which is part of the oceanic plate being scraped off and added onto the edge of the coronal plate. And here we have the general overlook and holistic view of the convergent plate boundary, oceanic to continental. This is the Earth Science Classroom. In this video, we're looking at drawing out the convergent plate boundary, looking at the continental plate colliding with the coronal plate. So two plates of similar or the same composition colliding on the Earth's surface, and we're looking at the natural features and geomorphology that come about or from this type of plate boundary. So on both sides of the diagram, we have our continental plate, which is made of the crust and lithosphere, our solid, rigid surface layer, which can vary between 25 to 100 kilometers thick. And below it, we have the asthenosphere, which is our plastic, our able to flow layer, which includes the magma and includes our convection currents, which is the basic mechanism for moving the plates above. Our continental plates are composed of mostly granitic rocks, which is granite and andesite, and variations of that. And the density is around 2.7 grams per centimeter cubed. Now, both of these plates that collide in are of similar or equal density. Therefore, we have a situation that is created when these two plates collide and kind of floats on top of the much denser asthenosphere, which is 3.4 to around 4.5 grams per centimeter cubed. So here we have the collision of the two continental plates whereby, unlike the other boundaries, we have subduction or the transform plate boundary. You have this accumulation of rock right in the middle and it's easier to go up in the atmosphere. So it creates this crumpling and collision effect of this massive mountain or orogenic belt that has been created and this orogenic effect of pushing the rock up in the air, creating a huge mountain range and high relief high elevation and it also goes deeper down in the asthenosphere as it is a larger more mass of rock it's going to sink down deeper into the asthenosphere which will create what's called lithostatic equilibrium it's how you get things to float and this is very common in this 
situation of two plates that are both the same density occurring, which is a great example of the Alps, Himalayas, which is India smashing into Eurasia. So here you see the moho, which is the separating boundary between the plate and the below asthenosphere, the change in velocity of earthquake waves. And you have this deeper section of around 100 kilometers max before it goes into the asthenosphere. And you have inside the mountain range, you have these folded mountain layers and rock combinations. And you have these faults these compression faults, you get lots of earthquakes in this kind of region, and you get the elevated mountain creating changes in the climate over long periods of time, and changing river courses, and even creating rivers, like the Ganges from the formation of the Himalayan mountains. This is the Earth Science Classroom. In this video, we are drawing out a diagram of a convergent plate boundary, looking at the oceanic to oceanic convergence, the boundary and the margin, and the features that go along with these two plates that converge and collide together. So these two plates are both oceanic. They are both generally thinner between five to 15, up to 20 kilometers in thickness. And I've drawn in a thin layer of sedimentary rock that's on the very top surface of the plate. And of course the plate is made up of both the crust and lithosphere and the moho is the bottom black layer, black line, which separates the plate or the crust to the upper mantle. So we're going to draw in the asthenosphere, which is that larger, thicker layer that's directly beneath the lithosphere and the plate. It is plastic. It flows due to the heat and the deformation that happens inside of this layer. It is a denser rock material, but it has the ability to move and have convection currents within this layer, which is the driving force and the mechanism behind what moves the plates on the surface, and this is creating all different features like subduction. Convection currents actively drag down and pull the above plate, and in terms of subduction, the left-hand side plate, which is basalt, the same as the right-hand side, which is also basalt because they're both oceanic, the left-hand side plate is slightly denser and slightly heavier, 3.0 grams per centimeter cubed, which means that side is going to subduct when colliding with the lighter 2.9 grams, and you get this angle of subduction underneath the lighter floating plate on the right-hand side. This subduction causes melting and decompression melting of basaltic magma to rise up through the lighter plate and create volcanoes on the ocean floor, eventually creating islands, volcanic islands, and creating a chain of islands along parallel to this boundary. And it also creates an ocean trench, the deep part of the ocean where the subduction occurs. And then you can actually see the distance of the volcanoes from the trench and it's consistent and parallel along the entire chain of volcanoes and along this convergent plate boundary. An example would be the Caribbean or the Pacific Ocean Islands around the Western Pacific. This is the Earth Science Classroom. In this video, we're looking at plate tectonics and we're looking at plate boundaries. And this video is going to focus on the transform plate boundary. Now, this is different to the previous boundaries we've covered on this channel. And looking at how these two or more plates, 
which creates a plate boundary, is going to move relative to each other and create different features on and under the Earth's surface. So as with other boundaries, we have the same layers, the crust and lithosphere, which creates the plate or the lithospheric plate. And below it, we have the asthenosphere, which is our plastic, our flow, our hot, but also dense rock layer, which extends down to about 610 kilometers from the Moho. And this could be either oceanic or continental plates. And we have our convection currents in the asthenosphere. So this plate boundary is the dividing point between the two plates. And this plate boundary is kind of unique because it does not involve any kind of constructive plate margin where the plates are being formed, which is divergent with the lava coming up at the rift or the ridge and creating new crust, which then spreads away, which is seafloor spreading under the ocean. Nor is it destructive, which includes either mountain building and orogeny or with subduction and melting to form volcanoes. This is a point of reference on the Earth's surface where the plates move past each other, they slide past each other and create a lot of friction and, and movement and of course earthquakes as a major feature or outcome of this plate boundary, which is earthquakes. But it is the motion and the speed of motion and direction of motion of the two plates, which is very important to consider. So the variables in this boundary are the plate's composition, the plate's density, the types of plates, ocean and continental, the rate or speed of motion and the direction of motion can impact the amount of friction that is created, the energy and resulting earthquakes if and where they occur along these boundaries or these fault lines. And the classic example for this transform plate boundary is going to be the San Andreas Fault Line or Fault System, which is located mostly in California in North America, in the States, and involves both the Pacific Oceanic Plate and the North American Cornell Plate sliding past each other at different angles and speeds. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on Earth Science.